All right, so what's up guys? We're gonna talk about scanning film in just a second, but first of all, a little uh, channel maintenance. So I've been kicking around the idea of maybe starting a Patreon account. Um, in the past, I've kind of held off on that for a couple reasons. The main reason was that uh, a couple of my other YouTube friends have Patreon accounts and they're real similar to this channel. And so I just kind of doubted that uh, we overlapped audiences, so I didn't know if the audience I have would be willing to to donate and help me out when they were already giving their money to these other channels. But I've kicked around the idea, and I just want to ask you guys, um, you know, is it something you would donate to? Is there content you would like uh, me to put out as a behind the scenes or, uh, you know, maybe offering, I don't know, a small print for higher level donations? Um, is it something you're interested in, first of all, and then what would you like to see if I do decide to do that? So, uh, anyway, just a little channel maintenance, just throw that out there. Let me know in the comments, and if it's, uh, if it's something that you guys don't want to give me any money, hey, I'm cool with that too. I'll just keep doing it this way, but just looking for ways to uh, maybe get a little bit more out of the channel. So, we got that out of the way. Let's talk about scanning some film. Okay, so today we are going to scan some black and white film using an Epson V700. Uh, it's basically going to be the same thing if you have a V750 or even their newer models, the V800 and V850. If you're new to scanning film, I highly, highly, highly recommend scanning black and white film first. It's the easiest, in my opinion, to scan. Um, after that, follow with maybe slide film like Velvia or Provia. And then last, and you may not want to scan this at all, is color negative. I find that very hard to scan. But we're going to start with the easy, easy stuff today, um, black and white. I'm going to be scanning a sheet of 4x5, but the scanning process is exactly the same as um, if you were shooting roll film. The only difference is loading it in the holders. Uh, they load a little bit differently, but that's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to take you through the entire process, start to finish. We're going from loading the film, scanning it, to how I kind of process a little bit in Photoshop. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy this. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how to load film in just a second. It's super easy. Um, a few things you'll need. First, um, I always wear these just little white lint-free gloves when handling my film. I'm very cautious about getting fingerprints on it. I want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, so have a pair of these on hand. They're dirt cheap. I also like to have either some compressed air or a pocket rocket to uh, blow dust and hair, a little fuzzies off the film and uh, off the scanning surface itself. These are super handy to have around. Finally, a microfiber cloth, again, to clean the scanning surface, clean the glass of the scanner beforehand. Dust is your enemy, and so you want to do everything in your power to avoid it. So with those on hand, let's uh, get started loading film. It's really easy. I use just the Epson um, plastic film holders. You'll read bad things about those online, but honestly, I've not had any issue. Um, now, again, I do scan mostly sheet film, so that's more flat than roll film. Uh, your mileage may vary with 120 or 35 millimeter film. Okay, so essentially what you'll do, this may be hard to see, but there is a glossy side and a matte side. And you actually want to load the glossy side down on the, uh, the film holder here. So you open this little door, slide the film in place, and then click it down. And make sure it's clicked down all the way. Um, and again, this holds my film flat enough. It's sheet film, so uh, it's not that difficult. But uh, yeah, so once you get in there, it needs to be as flat as possible. And I'll take, uh, once it's loaded, just my little pocket rocket, or whatever this is called, and just go over it, making sure everything is as dust free as possible. Now I, I developed these on my own. Those are typically very clean so I'm not too worried about dust. Uh, but again that's just going to, dust is going to add uh, a lot to your time processing it in Photoshop afterwards. So once it's loaded on there I open up the lid on the Epson V700 and I'll run a microfiber cloth over that and then some compressed air to make sure the lid or make sure all the surfaces are dust free you'll line up the little triangles in on the holder with the triangles in the uh, scanner itself they slot into place you close the lid 
and we're good to get started scanning. Okay, so we've got our film loaded in the scanner. I'm using an Epson V700, by the way. And let's open up our software. Now, I've got ViewScan, I've tried Silverfast, but honestly, the Epson Scan software, the default software that came with the scanner, has been uh, more than good enough for me. So that's what we're going to be using today. Let's go over just a few of these settings here. Mode, I leave in professional mode. I don't know what the others do. Um, document type is film with a film holder. And our film type is black and white negative film. Your other options are positive film, that's your Velvia. Uh, your Portra is your color negative film. Ektar is color negative, things like that. But we're just scanning black and white today. Image type, um, down here is where you select your quality. 16-bit grayscale is going to give you the highest quality black and white image you can get. Resolution, I set this to 3200 dpi. Now this scanner claims it can go much uh, much higher than that, but if you read online you'll find that the actual highest resolution is somewhere between 2400 and 3200. Anything beyond that, you're just wasting hard disk space and taking up a lot of time to scan. So I just set that at 3200. Um, document size, target size, trimming, I'll leave all that just whatever it defaulted to. These options down here at the bottom, all I have checked is unsharp mask, and I'll leave that at low. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But uh, the rest of these I leave unchecked, specifically the dust removal. Now we will have some dust on this film, that's inevitable, but we're going to take that out manually in Photoshop. These dust removal tools add a lot of time to the scan and they actually soften up your image quite a bit. So those are the settings that I uh, use just in this default menu here. So with all that selected the way we want, let's go ahead and preview the image. Hit preview down here, it takes it a few minutes to scan in. Okay, so a few minutes later, our preview has uh, scanned in. We go over to our preview window here, and a couple options. Right now our image looks like garbage, but we'll fix that in a bit. Um, this thumbnail option is when the software kind of guesses what the border of your image is going to be. I prefer to look at it just in normal mode here. That shows you the image itself plus the holder, just basically everything that the scanner covers. So right now everything's upside down. Let's rotate that twice. Hit the rotate arrow twice, rotate it 180 degrees. And then we're going to take our marquee tool and just roughly drag around the borders of our image here. We can fine tune that here in just a second, but uh, let's just roughly grab that. And we're going to zoom in to make our edits and adjustments. So once you've got that selected, go up here to the upper left and hit zoom. And again, it takes it a second for that to scan in. All right, so our preview is zoomed in and right now it's an overexposed mess. This, by the way, is uh, Delta 100. It was taken in uh, actually right after Christmas on a uh, trip to the Smokies. And I uh, actually have video from that trip. It didn't go, the trip itself didn't go at all like I had planned, so I still haven't decided if I'm going to put the video out. Um, but uh, this image I particularly like, not as it is right now. We're going to fix it. So let's go over here and this little uh, levels tab in the main menu, let's go ahead and click on that. But uh, actually first, before we click on that, you'll see the unsharp mask has defaulted to medium. Let's switch that back to low. That gives it just a little bit of sharpening. Um, if you go to medium, in my opinion, it makes the image too grainy. We're going to sharpen it more critically in Photoshop. So just um, leave that on low. It gives it just enough boost and sharpening. But from there, let's open up our levels tab here. And we're going to drag just the, uh, the black slider here, the shadow slider, all the way to the edge of where the data is. Don't go past where the data, you'll start to clip and get pure black in the darkest shadows, but right to the edge of the uh, data there. You're going to do the same thing with the highlights and you're going to find that this makes the image just way too dark there. And the reason it's way too dark is because your output sliders down here, Epson Scan defaults those, the shadows to 10 and the highlights to 200. So basically what's, what this means is the brightest parts in your image uh, all the way to the right up here on your, uh, your histogram, they're only going to show at a uh, value of 200 instead of 
the 255 that's pure white. So let's take this output slider and the highlights, drag it all the way to the end there. And uh, yeah, we're back to a pretty decent image here. You may want to uh, brighten that up just a little bit. This is still a little bit dark, so maybe bring in the highlights just a little bit more. And you can take your cursor and go over different uh, areas of the image. And down here at the bottom of the preview screen, it shows your levels. So what I'm trying to do is just make sure I don't clip any highlights or shadows. I don't want anything, uh, or I don't want too much in the 255 range or anything at zero in the shadows. All I'm trying to do is um, make sure nothing is clipped. We'll do our uh, more critical editing in Photoshop. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, you can fine tune the uh, borders of your image. Just take your cursor and drag those down just where you want them there. So uh, yeah, that's looking pretty decent. Like I said, we'll, uh, we'll critically edit in Photoshop here in just a second. So we're ready to scan. Go back here to this main window. Hit scan down here at the bottom. So that brings up a menu here. You can choose the, uh, the folder you want to save it in. I've already got that selected. Um, let's name this YouTube example. I uh, kind of failed at a take earlier, so let's go back and name that number one. Um, image format. You can save this as you know JPEGs, TIFFs, a couple different images there. TIFF is going to be the best quality, so let's go ahead and select that. Once we've got that the way we want it, hit OK, and uh, it will scan away. At 3200 DPI, this takes about six minutes, so we'll let it do its thing, and then we'll uh, open it in Photoshop. Okay, so we've got our image scanned in here. You can see it's just kind of uh, bland, maybe a little bit bright. We're going to take care of all that here in just a second. But there's two things I do um, before I start editing. First, let's check out the image size, and this will show you how big this film is here. Um, 14,000 pixels by almost 15,000 by nearly 12,000 pixels high. Um, Resolution, right now it's at the 3200 that we scanned it in. I always change that to 360. Um, I use an Epson printer, and Epson printers um, typically do well when this resolution is in a multiple of 90, so either 270 or 360. I put it at 360, and you can see at that uh, resolution, that's going to give me a print size of roughly 30 by 40. So just a huge, huge image here. We'll okay that out and uh, one other thing I do before I get started editing is the color profile that is embedded after the scan is some weird Epson, uh, Epson profile and you'll see that the reason I need to change that is right now it's negative it's the opposite of what you would expect normally to brighten an image you open up curves layer and you drag the curve up, we can see that darkens it. So we don't want to be dealing with that the whole time. So I usually just edit in Adobe RGB. So I'll go down here, convert to profile, switch that to Adobe RGB, and we're good to go. So now we're ready to edit the image. You can see at the borders of the image here, we've got just a little bit of a white border. That's where the uh, scan got some of the film holder. Now, normally I will, uh, I'll be a bit more particular about this, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to select the whole image with my crop tool here and just drag in the borders. Again, normally I'm going to be very particular about this, but for sake of the video, we'll just be quick about it. So that has got us a usable image as far as the borders go. Before we start editing the uh, contrast and the overall exposure here, there's one more thing I want to do. We need to clean out any dust spots, any scrapes in the film. I want to do that in the beginning so that we're not editing dust as we go along. So all I do is uh, zoom in and uh, you'll you want to zoom in pretty far here just to make sure you get all the dust out. Usually I do this at about 50%. Again, I won't go through this all with you, but I'll just show you some of the things you're looking to clean out. Um, so again, select your healing brush. And these are little water spots or little scrapes on the film. You can go through and clean that out here. You see a little white speck there that's usually dust. This is probably where some of the emulsion got, uh, got cleaned off and obviously 
you can do a better job with that. I'm rushing through this. But you'll go through and do this to the whole image. Now, this takes forever to do, especially um, things I get back from the lab. And I love my lab. I think they do a good job. But there's just dust everywhere sometimes. So going through a whole large format image, you can see that that can take a while on a dusty image. Fortunately, I, uh, I developed this one myself, and I tend to, to find that those are a bit cleaner than what I get back from the lab. So as much time as you need to clean up the dust, you can go do that. And uh, now we're ready to edit the tones, contrast, overall exposure, things like that. And really pretty straightforward workflow. I just open up a curves layer here. I think the image is too bright overall. So let's just bring that down. That's more like it. We want this white water to stand out here. And uh, you know, you can go crazy with the contrast if you want. Uh, I don't prefer too much contrast in my black and white images. Um, honestly, this image I feel does not need too much. Just pull that curves layer down um, and that's gonna just about do it for me. Um, black and white is to taste, so you can spend as much time with this as you want, or as little time as you want. This just happens to be one of those images where, um, yeah, in my opinion, uh, for what I like, the uh, look I'm going for, just didn't need too much work. So once you have the image edited uh, the way you like, we need to sharpen it. When you zoom in here, Tons of detail are there. This is zoomed in at 50%, but it's not the sharpest image in the world. So to do that, there are you know thousands of ways to sharpen under the sun. The way I do it is I'm going to create a completely new pixel layer. So the way I do that is a uh, command option shift, hold that on the keyboard. Then over here in your la layers palette, hit this little drop down menu, and you're going to scroll down to merge visible. So with, uh, again, Command, Option, Shift held down, click Merge Visible. And what that does is it gives you a completely separate layer that is basically everything that you, all the adjustments you had made up until that point. So it's a completely separate pixel layer. To sharpen, the method I use is on that pixel layer, I'll go up to Filter here and I'll hit Other and we'll do a High Pass Filter and takes a minute for that menu to pop up. With these four by five images, I found that around four pixels is going to give you tons of detail without being overly grainy or noisy. I've got this set to four, so let's go ahead and okay that out. And that leaves us with, um, once, it's, uh, once it resolves that, you'll see it leaves us with uh, nothing. Pretty terrible, terrible image here. But let's go to our blending mode over here. Right now it's in normal. And to apply your sharpening, basically let's look at hard light and soft light over here. Overlay will work as well, but hard light, if you click hard light, that's gonna give you your most dramatic sharpening. It may be tough to see this on a YouTube, but we'll see if I can show you here. So this is zoomed in to 50%. I'm gonna click this layer on and off and you can see just the dramatic sharpening that gave you. If that sharpening is too much, you can actually switch it to soft light that will uh, kind of give you a happy medium. You can see what soft light does. Not quite as dramatic sharpening, but I have found for these four by five images, the way I scan them, hard light works really well uh, to give you a super, super sharp image. Now, the downside to this is that in areas where there's not a lot of texture, this uh, running water being a good example here, you're gonna find that that really emphasizes the grain. So uh, easy to take care of, a little bit time consuming. Um, you may find that the grain is not bother, doesn't bother you, it does me. So to get rid of that, I pull up a layer mask and anywhere where there's not a lot of texture, I'm just gonna hit the brush tool make sure black is selected as my foreground and I'm just going to paint in the areas where I don't want the sharpening applied. Again, I'm not going to do all of this for you, but you can see uh, that's how I take care of the sharpening and uh, or actually take it out of the areas that I don't want it. Um, 
so yeah that is um, once I do that to the whole image that's pretty much it for this image I'll uh, once I you know clean out all the dust and take care of all of the uh, all these areas I don't want sharpened I will save this out and I will save it as a um, a large format document TIFF size TIFF file sizes can only go so large um, so if I want to save all the layers over here just save it as a large document uh, format that will say that will keep all your layers intact and your file sizes can be just huge with that all right yeah so that's basically it once it's saved out um, that is how I edit and scan black and white film if you like this video you know what to do give me a thumbs up and subscribe thanks for watching and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.